Hey there, once again, YouTube. My name is Ben Ferriolo, which you probably already know. I like to monitor volcanic and tectonic hazard areas from the comfort of my own home, and eventually I probably will go to school for seismology and volcanology as well. Um, something very interesting happened today. By the way, first off, they did change the webcam at Old Faithful. Personally, I kind of like this a little better. Kind of don't, kind of do. It depends. But they it's much higher off the ground, guys. This webcam is much higher off the ground. I actually can get somewhat of a better view. However, the angle is not as great as I wish it would be. By the way, guys, if you haven't, please check out my website. There's a link in the description box below right under my email address. It can help you, how to, uh, show you how to find seismic data and GPS data, how to analyze it, how to access it, all that good stuff. It also contains seismic images and plots of many different earthquake swarms and events. So if you want to go check that out, go ahead. I know I have not done much content lately, guys, and I'm sorry, but it's just been, life has been get, getting pretty busy today and yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before. But... I just want to let you guys know about something. Let's go back, shall we? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I let it slip. I wanted to start on the earthquake page first. There we go. Okay, so everything looks normal, somewhat, in the United States. Nothing too major. A few earthquakes here and there. Did have another earthquake down near Alabama and Florida, which I thought was interesting. Let's go to World. Ooh, looky, looky. What is that dot right there? Well, let's check it out. Let's go to Hawaii. Okay, so... Hawaii just had a magnitude 5.2 earthquake, supposedly at 16 kilometers in depth. Now, an earthquake this large of this magnitude, I'm not saying for sure it's volcanic activity, but look, these are three earthquakes just in the past hour or so. And notice how these are basically the only earthquakes of today. Hawaii calmed down extremely seismically just the past few days, and especially in the past few hours. And then all of a sudden, boom, you get a huge uptick in seismicity, including a 5.2. And that magnitude is likely to change, and I will show you why. Let's go to the event page just real quick. See what it says, shall we? Let's see here. Okay, notice how it says review status, automatic. Whenever you see that, it is pretty much for sure you are going to see the magnitude or the depth change. The fact that it says automatic means that the computer is reporting it first, and no human has edited it, and it's been only the computer. And as we know, computers get it wrong a lot, especially in regards to earthquake magnitudes and depths, guys, because they use an algorithm, right, a preset algorithm to detect these things and to say, okay, yeah, it's probably around a 5.2, but it could be all the way up to a 5.4, could be all the way down to a 4.8. But I did just look at the data, and you'll see in just a second, I agree it's definitely about a 5.2, 5.3 or so. Very, they, I think it got, they got it pretty correct. But the depth, I'm not sure about the depth, though. Very, I'm very interested in why this earthquake happened in this location. Again, the seismologists have not edited this at all. Only the computers are reporting this so far, which will likely change. Again, we saw magnitude 5.2 at 16 kilometers in depth in the northwest section of Hawaii, far from Kilauea and the Lower East Rift Zone. Isn't that interesting? Completely on the opposite side of the island. Literally, if you were to look at a map, which you'll see in just a second, it's all the, all the way on the opposite side. So far, and it's only 8.47 p.m. Pacific time. This is just coming in just in the past hour um, of me recording this. Again, it's 8.47 p.m. Pacific time, April 13, 2018. Already 502 people already, just in one hour, have reported feeling this earthquake. Let's go to the Did You Feel It map. See where the majority of the Did You Feel It reports are coming from. Oh, uh, wow, guys, look at this. My goodness. Strong shaking, guys. Strong shaking all across the Big Island of Hawaii. Not too strong. Not too strong. It's not in the yellow. It's not in the orange. But it's for the distance factor, guys. It, I think that's that's some pretty good shaking. We did have a yellow, did you feel it, report right here. Again, we got a green and some more green up here. Look at that in Honolulu. No, really no other reports anywhere else, but these seismic waves traveled quite far. Now, let's take a look real quick at the location of this earthquake, and you'll see why I think it is very strange, guys. This is very, very strange. We're going to turn U.S. faults on. Just so that you can see that this is not occurring on any preset fault. That doesn't mean that it's not tectonic, which, in my opinion, this could be volcanic. But the thing is, is, you know, there could be a fault up here that has not been mapped. That is very possible. Because uh, most of these down here have been mapped. But I don't know. I don't know, guys. I, I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. 
Here's the location of the magnitude 5.2 earthquake, which is likely to change. The magnitude will likely go up or go down. Yes, contrary to popular belief, USGS also upgrades earthquakes, though I do agree they downgrade earthquakes a little bit too much. Uh, 16 kilometers in depth, that will likely change. Then we have a magnitude 2.3, again, just in the past hour. Notice it's red. A magnitude 2.3 at 4.2 kilometers in depth, supposedly with a few digifula reports right on the flanks of Mauna Loa. And then we had an aftershock, a magnitude 3.0 at 12.7 kilometers in depth. Again, we did have some more digifula reports for this 3.0. So Hawaii's shaken up, guys. Seismicity was calming down for quite a while past few days maybe the past week or so and even today earlier today i noticed what only one two earthquakes very quiet very quiet i thought it was too quiet and i was right and now we got a 5.2 this is the second largest earthquake to hit the big island of hawaii since the eruptions calmed in 2018 remember in a few of my previous videos let me turn on satellite real quick a few of my previous videos a few of them ago they, we had a 5.5. Remember I talked about the 5.5 in Hawaii, and we confirmed it was the largest since the eruptions calmed in Hawaii in late 2018. Well, this is the second largest. We got a 5.2. Very interesting. And, and notice this whole area is very volcanic. This is a volcano right in this area, and I'll show you which one it is. But notice, I can't, probably can't notice too much from the satellite imagery just from here, but it is very populated in this area, guys, or all around this area. It's pretty populated. You know, population is quite sparse all across the Big Island of Hawaii, but I'm pretty sure there is a lava flow that goes right under an airport, an old lava flow. Obviously, it's not still active. Notice all along the coast, we got a lot of population, guys, and this is a volcano in this location. Now, let's go take a look just real fast. Let's go back to Volcano Hazards Program, if it'll let me. Come on, buddy. Now, let's go to Hawaii. Okay, come on. Okay, so notice we do have these volcanoes listed. These are just the ones that are monitored by USGS. Of course, we know the entire chain of Hawaii is volcanic in nature. The entire chain. I mean, even ones that are not poking up out of the sea yet. We got multiple seamounts around the area, especially Loihi, which if you've been following my videos, you know about Loihi. So up here, notice in the location of, let's see, the earthquake struck. Let's turn on terrain, shall we? The earthquake struck right in this area right here. Let's check out where the volcano is. Okay, you see that? Boom. 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 So the earthquake struck right about here, guys, just to the north-northeast of Hulalai. Please uh, forgive me if I said that wrong. I'm very bad at pronouncing new words. Halulalai volcano, which isn't really talked about much, guys. And I think I know why, because I do not believe it has erupted. Uh, I, mean, I mean, obviously it has erupted before, but I mean, in our lifetimes, really. Halulalai, the third most active volcano on the island of Hawaii, has erupted three times in the past 1,000 years and eight times in the past 1,500 years. The most recent eruption was in 1801, obviously not in our lifetime, so it's been quite a while, which generated a lava flow that reached the ocean and now underlies the Kona International Airport. Uh-oh. Yeah, there's population near this area, guys. Lava flows less than 5,000 years old cover about 80% of the volcano. Okay, and that's very interesting. So that this volcano, Halulalai, is the volcano that saw this earthquake. And it's very close proximity to, guys. Very close proximity to. So could this earthquake be related to an underground magmatic process that is currently taking place? Possibly. I'm thinking it is possible. Obviously, we know magma can travel anywhere. I mean, the eruptions of 2018 proved that beyond a shadow of a doubt that magma can travel and erupt anywhere it wants, period. <laughs> I mean, really, scientists cannot say, well, magma cannot go here. No, it'll go wherever it wants if it finds a weakness and if it has enough power. I turn on the GPS stations. Remember the earthquake occurred? Oh, come on. Come on. Earthquake occurred right up in this location right here. Notice there's only one GPS deformation station for Halalalai. So we're going to go check out the GPS deformation. In the past two years, okay... Remember, when viewing these blue three-chart images, the top is east-west horizontal deformation, the middle is north-south horizontal deformation, and this is vertical. Notice how there has really been neither any uplift or subsidence. Obviously, it goes up and down, breathes up and down, it looks like, but there is no sustained trend. I mean, there's a tiny, tiny trend of subsidence, tiny, but 
Then again, magma can appear out of nowhere. Maybe the magma is from Mauna Loa, or maybe this is tectonic in nature. I don't know. And we're going to take a look at the seismic data, but the GPS data for Halalalai is not showing any sustained uplift for any period of time. I mean, here's February 2019. Obviously, it could have been doing it in the past couple days and could just be an insane amount of magma, or this is just tectonic in nature. You don't know, don't know, but I just wanted to put that out there that it could be volcanic or tectonic. Let's check some of the seismic stations, shall we? Here's one of the closest seismic stations, which kind of had a boo-boo when I was looking on the seismic program swarm. Past six hours. Notice it did kind of glitch right here. There's a gap in the data, and you will see that in the seismic program swarm in just a second. It was so strong that it made the instrument glitch out. No joke. And I do see that a lot. I do see that happening on seismic stations a lot. And again, here's another look at it. Let's go back. Let's go to a distant station all the way down here, PPLD, all the way on the opposite side of the island, basically. Notice how strong it looks. Notice, though, I want to go back. I want to show you the quietness. Past 48 hours. We have probably a little quake there, a little quake there, but look at this. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Remember how we were seeing those deep, long-period, high-frequency events? Well, about a week ago, they stopped, and they have not really returned at all. And we see basically the only earthquake to occur in the past 48 hours, or even probably even longer than that, is the magnitude 5.2 in subsequent aftershock and the 2.3 on the flanks of Mauna Loa. Let's go back. Again, there it is right there. Multiple stations glitched out with this earthquake, guys. Multiple stations. And I'll show you that in just a second. Let's look at one more seismic station. Just look at another Webby quarter all the way over here at KKUD. These are not seismic in nature, I doubt. Here, let me go back and let's go to a separate station, shall we? LPH. Yeah, they're not showing up. But here is the showing it very weak on this station, very surprisingly. And it's the, this station, notice how this station is closer to the earthquake epicenter than PPLD. But notice how when, when you're up here, come on. When you're up here at LPH, we just saw that it barely even showed the earthquake at all. But down here at PPLD, which is even farther from the earthquake epicenter, it showed quite strong. So I'm unsure why that is. I am, again, I am thinking, although they are reporting it as a, oh, look, 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 look. This video is proof. USGS upgrades earthquakes too. Notice, it is now a 5.3, now at 18.9 kilometers in depth. Remember how I said it was automatic? Watch, it's going to say reviewed. I bet you anything it's going to say reviewed. Let's see. Aha! Review status is reviewed. See? Boom! Proof right there, guys. Although USGS does downgrade earthquakes too much, they upgraded this earthquake from a 5.2 to a 5.3, and now it's at 18.9 kilometers in depth, a little bit deeper. Now they're saying 745 people reported feeling this event. That number is going to skyrocket in the coming hours, guys. Remember, this just happened in about the past hour or so. But they have reviewed it finally, and this might change a little bit, but it is definitely looking like it is a 5.3. I was thinking it was a little bit higher than 5.2. Thank God they upgraded it and did not downgrade it. That's good. So why don't we go take a look at these seismic data just real fast. Let's go to origin, click phases. Let's click arrival time. Come on, buddy. Oh, okay. So we see the closest seismic station is HVHUAD, which resides right next to Halalalai, the volcano that saw this magnitude 5.2, just to the northeast. That station glitched a little bit. I will show it first, but I do also want to use a somewhat distant station, so I will also use IU Poha BHZ00, which actually resides right here on the southern flanks of Mauna Kea. And remember, the earthquake occurred right here. Here's Halalalai, so why don't we go take a look at HUAD, which is right here, and Poha which is right here on the southern flanks of Mauna Kea. Also, guys, before I look at the seismic data, I just wanted to let you know I ha I'm here I'm at Mauna Loa. Remember, we did have a small quake. I think it was, what, a 2.3, 2.5 on the flanks of Mauna Loa right over here, along with these two earthquakes just in the past hour or so. I'm here at the webcams. Here we are at one of the webcams from the south rim. That's steam. Now, I, I'm not saying this is not normal. Personally, I do not monitor, monitor excuse me, the webcams for Hawaii much at all. So, is it normal for Mauna Loa to steam? Because I don't know if it is, I don't know if it's not, but it is steaming. It is steaming just a little bit. Let's go to a different webcam, all the way down to the south. Notice, we do have a small steam pocket right here. 
and we do have some steaming up here in the distance. Again, this is April 13, 2019. This is likely the most recent shot. Still is daytime, although it's nighttime here. In Pacific time, they are ahead, what, like three, four hours or so. So just in the past hour, there has been some steaming at Mauna Loa. Let's go all the way down to the south. Doesn't really look like much is happening down all the way down here. But up here, near the summit of Mauna Loa, we do see some steaming. Again, this is the most recent, probably within about 20 minutes or so, steaming there. And also steaming far to the south, so I wouldn't be surprised if the whole summit is steaming right now. Do not know what that means. I do not know if that's normal. It probably is normal because Mauna Loa, I believe, has a very shallow magma reservoir. But I just want to let you guys know, it is steaming, for sure. So here we are in the seismic program, swarm with the most recent data streams as of 9.06 p.m. Pacific time, April 13th, 2019, from HUAD, which again is near Halulalai, and POHA in the IU network, which is right on the southern flanks of Mauna Kea. So we'll get a pretty good look at this earthquake. Let's first, let's do POHA, but let's first look at HUAD right here. All right, so let's go turn persistent rescale offset, overlap to 95. I am going to get a 0.8 hertz high pass filter to the sixth power ready, but I'm not enabling it yet. I'm not enabling the filter yet. Let's go forward. So we see some glitchy, glitchy mess. Remember how on the web recorders we saw it was glitching a little bit? Well, I believe those are slightly filtered, I believe. And this isn't. So we will we'll filter it in just a second but I want to see it without any filter. Let's go forward. Those are pretty strong. Those could be background micro -seasms because the spacings are far too spread out. Look from here to here is 10 seconds. The spacings are about 22, 27, about four seconds, and that's very low frequency. So I do not know, but we will we'll have the filter and we'll see if there's any harmonic tremor going on. Remember, this is HUAD, the one closest, the closest seismic station to the magnitude 5.3, which just struck notice. This is the earthquake. Huh? That's the earthquake? Look at it. <laughs> Doesn't really look like an earthquake, does it? Well, that's because the entire thing glitched out. at the pro Probably at the lowest frequency band possible. Look at that. Let me go back a little bit. Watch. Whoa. Look at that, guys. <laughs> My goodness, the entire thing just glitched. I mean, it was so strong. They probably knocked this monitor on its face. I mean, because this was probably, I'm going to say, maybe within 10 miles of the epicenter, if that. So that's very interesting. Let's go down here again. This is the aftershock. I believe this is one of the aftershocks that did occur. Dominant high range frequencies. But I do want to, all right, let's add that filter. Let's press enabled. Got a 0 0.8 hertz high pass filter. Okay, now we should be able to see. I'm not seeing really many uh, harmonic or volcanic tremor episodes. We do see some strange oscillations going up to about 600 amplitude count just prior to the earthquake here's the earthquake glitching out again look at this I, I mean i don't think i can even get a good look at this earthquake at all i mean the entire right here look at this just glitched completely glitched look at that this it, sh it should show a whole earthquake right here but it doesn't it's just having a hard time guys see some aftershocks afterwards here let's check it out all have high range frequencies, aftershock, 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 another aftershock. I'm not really seeing any low frequency harmonic or volcanic tremor, which is a good sign, but that doesn't mean it's not happening though. I mean, I still could be happening, I don't know, but I'm not really seeing it. I'm seeing a little bit, a little bit in the lower frequency band, but I don't know. You'll have to be the judge on that one. And the date stream ends right there because... That is the most recent data. Okay, so why don't we go take a look? Let's close this out. Now here we have Poha, which is on the southern flanks of Mauna Kea. This one probably did not shake as hard, so it wasn't thrown on its butt. <laughs> Let's go forward. Here we can see the earthquake, obviously, right here, the magnitude 5.3. And we have no frequency filter, by the way. No frequency filter. I don't I think we do need one though. Let's turn on. Let's turn on a 0.8 hertz high pass filter. 0.8. I'm going to do to the sixth power. Press OK. OK. Let's zoom all the way out. Dominant high range frequencies. Very strong frequencies of all bands. But notice the length of the coda. Remember the coda is the end tail of any earthquake. This is very intriguing. Dominant lower frequencies. Obviously the strongest frequencies. Let's check it out of this earthquake. 
Oh yeah. Dominant lower frequencies, guys. Let's turn log frequency off to see all the range. Oh yeah. Some strong frequency, obviously. Obviously, there's not a low frequency earthquake, guys. But the strongest frequencies are obviously in the lower frequency band. Let's turn the spectrogram back on to see how long this coda lasts. Look at the end tail of this earthquake, guys. Look at how strong it is for the longest time. Look at that. I mean, I'm going to say the coda starts to die down. Let's see. I'm trying to see. Beforehand, it looked like that. Before, Afterhand, it looks... I'm going to say the coda ended right at about 317 and the earthquake started at what 309 so technically this earthquake lasted like eight minutes yeah guys i don't know why the coda was that long i do not think it should be that long guys i don't know though i don't know and then we have multiple aftershocks again aftershock 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 this one could have been here let's go to the earthquake page just real quick just real quick. Come on, buddy. So the Mauna Loa earthquake was at 2.3 at 4.2 kilometers in depth, which occurred at 316. At 316. So the Mauna Loa earthquake was... Let's see. This one right here. This one was the Mauna Loa earthquake. Very interesting. More aftershocks, more aftershocks. So what is in store for the big island of Hawaii, guys? What is in store? This is very intriguing that... Any activity really this strong would all of a sudden appear near Halalalai, which again is, the whole island is volcanic, obviously, guys. But, very intriguing. Again, the coda of this earthquake lasted an insane amount of time, all the way to 317 UTC, basically. Multiple aftershocks again, obviously. So, do you think an eruption is coming for Halalalai? I wouldn't be surprised, but it would put... A lot of population in danger. I'm guessing probably a little bit more than the Kilauea eruptions of 2018 did. It would be a noteworthy eruption, though. I don't know what's going on right now. There are no webcams over there. I'm not seeing any news about this really anywhere except a few reports on YouTube. Um, but Mauna Loa, again, is steaming. I want to go back. I want to see the most recent webcam footage. Here we notice the sun is going down. It's almost nighttime, guys. But again, we do see it's steaming just a little bit at the south pit. Go all the way down to the upper, uh, the upper part of the Mauna Loa and Southwest Rift Zone. Again, it is steaming right here. We do have some other steam off in the distance to the, I believe it's facing north. I think it's facing north, correct me if I'm wrong. Also, please let me know if it's normal for it to steam. Because I, I have seen Mauna Loa steaming a little bit before, but for, the, for it to steam after seeing an earthquake, especially a 5.2 5 up near Halalalai, that's very interesting, very intriguing. Now, I want to go back. Let's zoom to world. I'm going to refresh this to see if... Oh, my God. Okay, so we are seeing a magnitude 4.0 in Utah. Okay, so seismicity is starting to increase not only in Hawaii, but we had a... Okay, let me first zoom to Hawaii. I would just want to... They're still reporting it as a 5.3 at 18.9 kilometers in depth. Let's see how many did you feel reports are there now. Over 800, I bet. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, hello there. Look at the moment tensor. The moment tensor is suggesting, I mean, I'm not an expert at moment tensors, but I have seen fried egg patterns like this before. They usually indicate either a large inflationary or deflationary event, like a large collapse or a large inflationary event or huge amount of uplift happening at a very fast rate because of magma. That is very possible. I'm very interested that the moment tensor looks like this, guys, because a lot of the volcanic eruptions in Kilauea kind of did look like this. Obviously, they were a little bit different, but volcanic collapses and also mining collapses and other deflationary events have looked like this before, too. 1,255 people reporting feeling it. Many, many did you feel reports are still coming in. Let me go back. All right, let me zoom to central U.S. Nothing there, but we do see, come on, guys. We do see a magnitude 4.0 near Fillmore, Utah. No did you feel it reports. No did you feel it reports. Very interesting. Notice how the review status is automatic. So you might see this downgraded because I do not see any did you feel reports. There should be some if it's a 4.0, especially at this shallow of a depth. This depth is obviously incorrect because I doubt the elevation is that high. Don't trust the depth if it's still like that. But I do believe they're going to downgrade this, possibly do a 3.5. We'll take a look at the seismic data just real quick because seismologists have not checked this out yet. And remember, computers get it wrong almost all of the time. However, the computer for the magnitude 5.3 in Hawaii 
got it very close, very close. TCRU and the UU network, broadband vertical, 01 location code. Let's look at it just real quick. Okay, guys, I'm retracting my statement. I'm retracting my statement that they should downgrade it to like a 3.5 because nobody felt it. But maybe it's because there's nobody really in the area. Because near Hawaii, there's a large population. There's a lot of populace in that area, right? But here, there might not be that much population. But I just looked at the data. Let's turn to rescale offset overlap to 95. I'm going to get a filter ready, but I'm not going to enable it yet. Going to get the 0 0.8 hertz filter ready since it's a broadband station, but did not enable it yet. Earlier in the day, we did see an earthquake right there. Very small, very tiny. But let's go forward. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Okay, so how is it that a 5.3 strikes Hawaii, and seismicity has been very calm there recently. 5.3 hits Hawaii, then within an hour, a 4.0 or larger strikes Utah when obviously Utah has been seeing seismicity lately, but it hasn't been as crazy as it was a few months ago when it was starting to increase. Um, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, how they can't be connected. I mean, obviously they could be. I mean, the whole planet's like an engine, guys. Everything has to be interconnected in some way. That is my belief. I have no proof for that, but that is legitimately, legitimately my belief. Seeing some interesting lower frequency events right here. Don't know if they could be labeled low frequency earthquake or not. I don't know what's going on here, guys. Utah has some strange activity, guys. Even some strange military activity sometimes. I hear there's a big, big military base somewhere. Oh. Okay. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Uh, this is very interesting. It, it almost looks like a low-frequency earthquake. But this large, this magnitude, I mean, obviously, if a low-frequency earthquake happened at like a 4.0 to 4.5, it would, no matter what, have lower frequencies going up this high. No matter what. Just based on the strength, guys. And you can see that the dominant frequencies are much lower than the high-frequency 5.3 in Hawaii. Could this be volcanic in or origin? I'm not saying it is. Not saying it is at all. But it is very similar to some of the lower frequency events that we have been seeing in Utah lately. Look at this. This is definitely looks like a low frequency earthquake. I got to check this out as a spectra plot. I got to check it out. Wow. Very interesting. I'm going to turn on a filter. Let me enable a filter. There's the filter. Okay. This definitely looks like here. And let's log frequency off. Wow. Dominant frequencies rest between 0 0.5 hertz to 2.5 hertz. Look at that right there. Now let's go back to the 4.0, which I originally said they should downgrade it to a 3.5. I'm thinking a 4.0 is probably around there. 4.0, definitely not larger than a 4.5, that's for sure. But that's a low frequency earthquake, guys. Is there volcanic activity occurring in Utah? Could be. The crust is very thin there, guys. There's many cinder cones, many, many cinder cones, many old lava flows in Utah, Nevada, you name it. Pretty much that entire deserty area is very volcanic. Hasn't happened in a long time, though, so we're probably, I'm not going to say we're overdue. People use that word too much. People use the word overdue too much. Technically, with volcanic activity, there's really no such thing as overdue. Because sometimes volcanoes can go thousands of years while being overdue, and some erupt early very early so it really all depends on the process that is taking place beneath the crust again we do see a supposed magnitude 4.0 let's see if they have updated it let's go back let's go back let's click refresh come on buddy please tell me a seismologist looked at it uh, come on go back no nobody's looked at it yet huh interesting okay let's go back I refreshed it again, 4.0, still nobody reporting feeling this earthquake at all, at all. There's the shake map. Let's check out the shake map just real quick. Scroll down. Yeah, we definitely should be seeing some people feel it, guys. We definitely should be. Oh, yeah, we definitely should get some reports soon, guys. There's definitely people that live near this area. And again, looking at the seismic data, guys, actually... But get this, do you know volcanic earthquakes that have a dominant lower frequency? Like, let's say there is a magnitude 4.5 high frequency earthquake. Dominant high range frequency is probably going all the way to 50 hertz, right? 
that will be felt by a wide range of people. But let's say there's the same exact magnitude of 4.5, but with a lower frequency band, primarily maybe around 1 hertz to 5 hertz. I'm going to say probably more people are not going to feel that. The same process, the same power is being released, but over a longer duration of time. Let me zoom out. Notice this magnitude again, magnitude 4.0. Uh oh. There we go. Magnitude 4.0, probably around 4.0. Low frequency earthquake. I'm sticking with it. I'm going to check out the spectra plot. Just one last time. That is weird. Look at this almost monochromatic, meaning one frequency. Obviously, it's not exactly monochromatic, but it's very close. Look at this from 1.02 hertz to about 1.16 hertz. That is extremely, extremely odd. I'm going to click log frequency off. Look at that. That is the strangest spectra plot I've ever seen for any earthquake ever, even with the 0.8 hertz high pass filter. That is very strange. Here we kind of see the same thing, but not really. But here, let's go all the way to the beginning of the earthquake. Boom. Here, let me go forward for you. Let's go forward, go forward. Nothing, 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 nothing. And then all of a sudden, boom. And then all of a sudden, boom. Wow. Okay, guys, so... We did see a magnitude 4.0 earthquake, likely a 4.0. Definitely the depth is not right. I would not trust the depth that they're still saying it's that large. Let's go to the world. Anything else taking place before I stop the video? Anything else? Because it just seemed everything was popping off. So we had a magnitude 5.3 near Halulalai volcano in Hawaii, which has not erupted since 1801. The 5.3, uh, over 1,000 people so far. Over 1,200 people have reported feeling it. 5.3 occurred at 18.9 kilometers in depth. Nobody has reported feeling this earthquake, though. The magnitude 4.0 in near Fillmore, Utah, negative 3.3 kilometers in depth. Again, the depth is wrong. Do not trust it unless it's much smaller because the elevation cannot. We cannot see earthquakes. Oh, okay. Well, we are not done yet. <laughs> we are not done yet. We did see another earthquake of magnitude 2.5 at 12.6 kilometers in depth. That likely will change a little bit since the review status is only automatic and we have proven through this video that automatic review status should not be trusted immediately. Looks like this is another aftershock. Possibly something traveling to the northwest. Don't know that for sure though. Again, Mauna Loa has been steaming a little bit lately. Seismicity has been low for the past few days except for today where both seismicity has skyrocketed. Both for the northwestern section of Hawaii near Halalalai Volcano and near Fillmore, Utah. So we will see where this leads, guys. I will keep an eye on this activity for sure. Definitely, I will put out another video tomorrow if any of this changes. And that's it for right now, guys. I will be back soon. Let me know what you think below. God bless and have a great evening.